Now, what do you do whenever you have a rod and you, it's not a uniform density? And we're going to start out with uniform density, but how do you calculate things that aren't exactly uniform or aren't exactly perfect or point masses, for example? How would you calculate where its center of mass is? Well, here I have a rod, and I'm going to carve out a very small section, delta x, that has a mass, delta m. Another way to put that, deltas or d's, right? Uh, I carve out a section, dx, that has a mass dm, and it is some position x away from uh, the endpoint. Now, obviously, I could carve out this section anywhere I want, and the idea is I'm going to carve out uh, a very, very small section. And what I could do is I could divide this entire rod up into insanely small sections, right? Each of them x away. And uh, we're going to make each of them have a mass, dm, or, or delta. Let's use delta m to start out with. And if I carve this up into tons and tons and tons and tons and tons, and tons of small sections, and then I add it up, all their mass, almost like each of these was a point mass. Each section was a point mass all the way down. I added them all up using the equation that I have. Well, then I'd get these. I'd be able to calculate the center of mass. And the way to make this more accurate, of course, if, if I divided this all up into itty bitty chunks and each of those became points that went into my equation, uh, is to make my delta x and how much mass I have, delta m, smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, those of you who have had calculus know exactly where I'm going. I'm going to, and you probably recognize this idea whenever you first saw it, we're going to take the limit. We're going to take the limit as delta m goes to zero. In other words, delta m here, how big this thing is, how much mass, I should say, is in there, is going to shrink. How much, uh, how much mass I'm going to cut out is going to shrink all the way down to zero. So I'm going to add up all of the little mass chunks that I might have divided up in here, but I'm going to shrink all those guys down to zero. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing over here, right? This is the equation, total mass uh, times, one over total mass times, you're going to add up all the different point masses here. And remember, I had a whole bunch of different point masses. Well, what if we shrunk the amount of mass that I cut out and keep shrinking it down smaller and smaller and smaller, and the chunks continually get smaller? So let's add all those up. As limit delta m, the chunk size goes down to zero. So I get more and more chunks. Now, we're not going to actually deal with the limit here. We're going to go ahead and jump to the definition of the integral. This is the definition of the integral. So that says, take the integral from zero to l over the length of the entire rod. Uh, the integral means add it all up, right, sum of. Take the integral from zero to l from the beginning of the rod to the end of the rod of all the different mass chunks you might have, dm right, of mass, and multiply that, one over that, multiply it by the integral from 0 to L of, here's this idea, right, this is the position times, however far away it is, times what the mass is at that point, so from 0 to L, x dm. Now, if, if you're not a calculus person and all this is relatively confusing, this is the equation you're going to end up using here, and I want to try to explain that a little bit more. Let's come back to the equation that we've already used. The center of mass is going to be 1 over the mass total times whatever the position 1 is times the mass that's there, plus position 2 times the mass that's there, so forth and so on. Uh, you could divide this entire thing by mt if you don't like this 1 over total mass. Well, this is the same equation here. This says add up all the masses. Get the total mass over the length of the entire rod. So we're going to deal with rods here. Uh, so find the total mass. That's total mass here. Of all the little mass chunks that might end up there, dm. Um, and this says multiply the position times all those mass chunks and then add them up. That's what this is. Same thing as that part of the equation. Now let's actually look at using that equation in practice. Uh, the thing that you need to know is what's called linear density. That's something you're going to want to write down. So along with the equation here, the one that was on the previous screen, that's very important, you're going to want to write down what linear density is. Now density we know. Density of a three-dimensional object is mass divided by volume. But linear density is going to be mass divided by, we're only dealing with one dimension, linear, length here. So mass divided by the length of the entire thing would give you the linear density of it. And if we were to cut out an insanely small chunk like we talked about, the linear density of this point is going to be the mass, which is dm, divided by how wide it is, which is dx, right? Delta x or dx. 
Now rods can come in all different ways, shapes, uh, and sizes, but specifically we're going to talk about are they uniform or non-uniform. In other words, is the mass distributed consistently in them, it's perfectly balanced, or is it unbalanced, maybe there's more mass on one side than the other. And so let's find the center of mass location of a uniform center, uh, uniform linear uh, rod. So linear density, it's uniform uh, rod. Well that's obviously going to be in the very center of it, but let's actually prove that. Now here's the equation for center of mass, and I have linear density, aka linear density is constant. And we're, we use uh, Greek letter lambda for li uh, linear density. Now if you look at this equation here for center of mass, you have some problems. Zero to L is all about length, and dm is all about mass, mass chunks. And and so what you're going to find with every single problem is you're going to have to come back to the linear density equation because linear density relates your mass chunks to where they might be located, dx. This will let you solve for dm and substitute in, getting rid of the dm and getting a dx in there. Now notice once I substitute in, so I'm using linear density to get rid of my dm's and get it in, get it in terms of dx because density relates mass to, if, it, if it's here, volume, but if we're talking linear density, mass to location linearly or, or x. So I'm able to substitute in lambda times dx for dm, solving linear density around, which now gets my integrals in terms of position, and now I'm taking the integral in terms of position, dx. Next step, I just need to take these two integrals. Notice here, lambda is just a constant because it's a uniform linear density, so that means this would just be some number, so lambda is just a constant. Here, x is the variable according to dx, so this is going to go up to squared with a one-half out in front, and I'm going to get an x in that. So after taking those two integrals, now all that's left is to evaluate each one between L and 0. And quite obviously, whenever I substitute the zeros in here, then the entire thing is going to cancel out. So I really don't even have to worry about those, although it would be more proper to show it. And I decided to go ahead and show the actual substituting in the L and the 0. And quite obviously, this 0 times lambda goes away, and then 0 squared times lambda times a half, 0 times anything. So that goes away leaving me with just this, and now check out what else cancels. There's a lambda in the denominator and a lambda being multiplied over in the numerator on that side, so they cancel. Also, there's an L and an L squared, so the L cancels out the squared there. Leaving me with exactly what you already know, that nothing is left over here. The center of mass is located at one-half times L. Uniform rod, quite obviously, center of mass will be perfectly in the middle, half of the length. Now, if you were like me in the previous problem, the only thought I had whenever I was first learning this is, wow, that's a lot of work to get something that's quite, quite obviously common sense. I don't think I need to go through all of that just to figure out the center of mass is perfectly in the middle of a uniform rod. Uh, on the other hand, what happens whenever the rod isn't uniform? What about whenever the linear density changes according to a, a times x. In other words, it starts out with very little mass over here, but more mass gets added in. The density goes up as you get to the other side. Now the process is actually exactly the same. You use the exact same equation, 1 over integral from 0 to L dm, that's the total mass, times the integral from 0 to L of the positions times dm, x dm. And we're once again going to solve for dm here from the linear uh, fr from our linear density, and we're going to substitute in, except now we actually have an equation for lambda. It's not the exact same thing that it was. Instead, lambda is ax, not some constant that we can leave lambda. So ax equals dm dx. Multiply my dx over so that I can substitute in ax dx equals dm. Now before we go any further, let's go ahead and let's make a prediction. Uh, we would guess that it's going to be, because more mass is on the right hand side, we're going to guess that our uh, center of mass is going to be a little lopsided, away from the center, maybe somewhere over that way, a little past the halfway mark. Now, we went ahead and we solved for dm in the linear density equation. Notice we substituted in ax for the linear density, and so now we know what dm is. It's ax dx, and so you substitute that in to where everything is going to work out to where you have x and dx in terms of x for your integral, same thing here. And we need to combine a few like terms here. I've got x times ax dx, and so I'm going to end up with x squared. Now once I integrate, this was ax dx, so ax, note a is a constant, and so my x goes up to an x squared, and I have to put a one-half 
out in front. Here, a is a constant. x squared goes up to x cubed, and I have to put a one-third. You have to take whatever's in the exponent and send it down to the denominator. Now I need to evaluate both of those between 0 and l. And once again, in this situation, those terms with 0 in them cancel out. Now at this stage, just like in the last problem, we see we have a bunch of stuff that cancels. My a's cancel, one in the denominator, one in the numerator, and an l squared and an l cubed, so it knocks the cubed off, leaving me just with l there. So that leaves me with 1 over 1 half times 1 third l, and I need to deal with this 1 over 1 half. Well, that's taking the inverse of it, so let me flip that up. And don't get stuck on this idea right here. 1 over 1 half means you're taking the inverse of it, so the 2 gets sent up. This fraction gets flipped on top of itself, taking the inverse. That's why the 2 over 1. And so then I multiply in, and I get something that we actually predicted. The center of mass will be 2 thirds times the length here, 2 thirds times the length. So scrolling back up to where that is, if here is my uh, halfway point right here, so somewhere in here is where the actual center of mass will be in this non-uniform rod where mass is increasing gradually in, in a linear manner. A times x. Now all these problems follow the very same sort of pattern. You're going to use this center of mass equation. That's 1 over mass total and then x times each of their positions whenever you're dealing with a rod or any other non-uniform thing. And this, by the way, is just in the x-axis. You would do the exact same thing if you had to deal with a two-dimensional object that had both x and y. Uh, you're going to end up solving around your linear density and substituting in for the dm's to get those in terms of x and then working the, uh, the integrals. And every single time uh, here, your zeros end up canceling out there after you substitute that, that end to the other side. And you'll see that you have a lot of stuff that cancels here. Generally, all the links will cancel down to where there's only one of them left uh, in the numerator, and all the other variables will cancel out that was in the denominator. All right, make sure to get uh, this down. To make sure to really think and churn on this a little bit. We'll go over and do a couple more example problems in class and continue to work these through.